Hello, hello. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, how to generate toolpaths for the SRM20 machine um, using a software called CopperCam. And here we are on the desktop of the uh, of the computer that is connected to the SRM20 machine, and you can find CopperCam over here. I have it already open. And uh, the first thing. Uh, is to have your Gerber files ready. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to prepare those in a separate video. But you should go to File, Open, New Circuit, then go to the folder where you have your Gerber files. In this case, it's this over here. And we're gonna start with the front cover uh, layer. So each, uh, so Gerber files, uh, the Gerber um, export or plot functionality in KiCad it exports, it can export every layer on, in a separate uh, Gerber file. You open it up, uh, so there's going to be a dialogue asking uh, to confirm the board dimensions. So we want to reframe, reframe around the existing circuitry in a way uh, so that the copper cam is going to automat automatically detect where the geometry is and it's gonna uh, draw a margin of uh, specified amount uh, around it. Uh, so two millimeters is a good value here. And Z thickness is the thickness of our circuit board. So since we are using uh, copper covered clads, uh, FR1 copper covered clads. So those are uh, 1.6 millimeters in thickness. So we're gonna use that value over here. And now CopperCam is asking whether the uh, whether we are sure that we want to have this thickness because the two millimeter drill is defined to drill at 1.8 millimeter depth and which is okay in our case. And now we have to configure whether the path that is selected that is highlighted red is uh, actually the outline or the contour of, of the circuit board and in this case it's uh, is the case so we hit yes. and. Uh, yeah, so basically what CopperCam just did, it placed all the traces uh, that we need on the on the first layer and then the outline on the layer number six. So the edge cuts are on the last layer over here. So this is the place where you see the layers. Next thing is we need to import the drill files. We go to File, Open, Drills, and select the drill file, which is DRL, .drl file. Open. And uh, CopperCam is going to ask uh, us whether the input uh, is valid. So we see the holes, even though they do not match the, the traces, these are okay. Hit yes. Uh, and the next um, thing that we need to do, we need to rotate them so that they match the alignment or the rota rotation of the other, uh, of, of the traces. Uh, of the holes that we have over here. Um, so yeah, this is why uh, software like CopperCam and uh, also FlatCam are useful because they offer you a possibility to map it, uh, map different layers onto each other because the Gerber files not necessarily have this functionality built in. So what do we need to do? We need to select um, layer number five. This is where the drill points were actually placed and go to file rotate 90. It's going to rotate it 90 degrees one time. We need to rotate it one more time in order to make uh, them match the, the rotation. So you see the there are more pins on the top part, uh, so there are more holes on the top part. These are matching the traces on the top part over here. And then there are a little bit less holes on the, on the bottom part. Um, next is a really nice feature in CopperCam, which is reference pads. So by using two reference pads, you can map uh, elements in different layers together so that they match up uh, and they scale uh, accordingly. And uh, in order to define a reference pad, we need to zoom in and select a hover uh, an element that we want to specify as a reference. Right click and choose the set as reference pad option. And we want to map this pin to this hole over here. How do we do that? So we go to the drill layer 
we hover the drill point uh, that we want to map, right click and choose the adjust the reference pad one option. And uh, so yeah, now we need the second one in order to make these, this drill layer to scale up to the size of the circuit board. So we first hover the other corner over here, so the pad on the other corner, on the lower right corner, right click and uh, select the set as reference pad 2 option. Then we go to the drill layer, zoom in a little bit, uh, select, uh, yeah, hover the, um, the drilling point that we want to match up, uh, and right click and adjust the reference pad 2. And as you see, it all matches up nicely. Next is we want to make sure that the hole sizes are are uh, set according to what we want. So we want these to be one millimeter. So we right click and choose the change diameter option and I'm going to select one. So these drilling holes, they are grouped together. So we won't need to change the diameter for all of those, but so I think that they are they change uh, they chain together group together according to the shape of those, and this rectangular one uh, didn't change. So we need to we need to select this, and now we need to go back to the drill layer, select the drill point, change diameter, and set it to one millimeter, like this. Then uh, these holes over here where the uh, so yeah, this is gonna, this is a step stick board, like a motor driver board. Uh, so we want these um, these holes to be 1.5 millimeter in diameter, so that we can insert uh, uh, rivets, like 1.5 uh, millimeter out, outer diameter rivets over here. So I'm gonna set those to 1.5. Uh, I mean, this was just this rectangular one. So let's change the round ones, the circular ones as well. So 0.5, okay. And uh, also these. So here, uh, what we want to do, we want to connect the, these are the motor connections, so the stepper motor connections. So let's go to the drill layer again, select change diameter. 1.5, okay, go to the drill layer again, change diameter, 0.5, okay, and lastly we want to change these two, go to the drill layer, uh, because these are the mounting holes for, um, for the power connector, so we want to change those to 2 millimeters. Okay, so now our drill drilling points are set. What we want to do is to make sure that the margin around the circuit board is the same. And uh, as we can see visually, it is not. So we need to go to File, Dimensions. And so this is the dialog that we saw already once when we imported, when we first opened the, when we opened the first layer. And uh, we can leave the, the same values over here and hit OK and uh, CopperCam is going to recalculate. Another important thing is to specify the origin, so which is uh, this white cross. The white cross is uh, identifying the origin. Uh, so we go to File, Origin, and here we can enter the origin where we want it to be. So 0 and 0 is a good, uh, good start. And at this point we are actually ready to create a tool path. In order to create the tool paths, we need to select tools for uh, doing that. So in order to do that, you go to parameters, select tools. And here you can specify tools for each um, separate operation. So for engraving, we're gonna choose the two point, no, the, the point 0.2 to point 0.5 millimeter engraver. So which actually matches with uh, the 0. Point, so I, yeah, we assume that it's a 0. 0.4 millimeter tool bit um, that it's leaving um, yeah 0. 0.4 millimeter trace and then for hatching uh, so when you want to remove uh, more copper you can basically select the same tool 
And then for the cutting tool, we're gonna select the one millimeter cutter. For centering tool, so we're not gonna use centering holes at this time. So we need, uh, so we, you can, so here we have uh, two millimeter and three millimeter drills in our library. Uh, so if you need, ever need them, so there's gonna be a separate video about making double-sided uh, circuit boards, then you might need to use these. Uh, so for drilling tools, if you have the uh, same size um, drill holes, so, so all, all of the drilling holes on your circuit board are the same size, are the same diameter, then you could use a single tool for all the drills. But in this case, we're gonna use, um, use uh, different drills for each of the for each of the drilling holes, and uh, yeah, that's we don't we won't use the circular boring feature, so we don't want to the drill to make circles uh, horizontally, and uh, uh, so we want it to go only vertically, um, basically along the z-axis. So and here, oh, uh, so yeah, this is the these are the drills. We're gonna use, so we're gonna use one millimeter drill, 1.5 millimeter drill, and two millimeter drill. The reason why I specify also the number four, uh, so the fourth option is that um, I think there's a bug in, in CopperCam, which uh, when exporting the tool paths, it doesn't show um, the two millimeter drill as an option. Here, um, so we can specify the drilling depth. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more than 1.6 millimeters, like 1.8 millimeters. And for the boring speed, five millimeter per second is a good value. Uh, and hit OK. And then you can go to the first layer and you can create two paths uh, by uh, using this calculate contours option over here. And uh, so here you have to specify how uh, many success Excessive contours you want to have uh, around each trace, and then how many uh, extra contours around pads you want to have. So four is a good number. Again, this is the same that we use with mods on in Fab Academy. Uh, so these settings are good. Uh, hit OK, and CopperCam is gonna start calculating uh, the contours for you. And here we go. Uh, so this is the visualization. I don't think that you can rotate it in 3D, but you can disable this by hitting this icon. This is gonna show you the final rendering. And we could wish maybe a little bit bigger offset, so to kind of get rid of uh, these little artifacts over here. So I'm gonna set, disable this and maybe delete all contours and do it one more time, and increase this to five, and okay. Here we go, so this is already better. Mm. And um, yeah, we could go even one more, I guess. Okay, this is much better. Uh, so here we can see that the little artifacts are gone completely. I'm gonna disable this. And once this is done, oh, we can actually start exporting the toolpaths. And in order to do that, we need to click on this button over here, mill. You can also access it under machine mill. So here, uh, if you're using the same size, the same type of a tool, you can specify multiple operations after each other. Uh, but in this case, for each operation, we are using different tools. So for engraving layer, we are going to use the open core millimeter tool. Uh, so we need to just um, um, select one section or one operation per sequence. And if you're doing double-sided, then you might need to use the mirror X feature as well. Uh, so double check uh, the engraving speed. So 10 millimeter per second for the tools that we are using is fine. And you need to take also into account uh, the, the X, uh, Y, zero point, uh, which should be the uh, white cross. So, but it's up to you to choose uh, where the origin point is. So white cross is a good choice because we set it earlier uh, by using the origin feature, file origin feature. 
And then uh, we also need to uh, have the opportunity to choose the Z0 point, uh, and it's usually the circuit surface. So this is where we're gonna do the Z origin uh, measurement uh, setting. And the rest of it is not so important. So there are some advanced features also. If the bed of your machine is not that flat, and here you hit OK. And uh, I'm going to make a new folder, milling. And uh, so the type is going to be EGX, so which is a weird format, but it contains RML1 code, uh, which is good for the SRM20 and uh, MDX40 machines. And uh, for each operation, it is a good idea to to give names, and I so also like to add um, add the tool diameter that I expect to be there, and hit save. I go back to the menu again, and instead of engraving, I'm gonna choose the drilling with a one millimeter tool. So that's done. Um, then again, drilling with 1.5. Okay. Then again, the mill menu and drilling with two. And then again, the mill menu and cutting out with one millimeter tool. Like so. And then when you go to the folder, in the desktop here, milling, uh, you will see that uh, with the file names that we specified in the dialogues, uh, CopperCam added um, these extensions uh, like T3, T5, T6. These map to the tool definitions in CopperCam. So if you go back to CopperCam, you'll go to parameters and tool library. So the tool numbers are mapped to these numbers over here. So as you see, the numbers are changed, and uh, with the numbers, also the parameters change for the different milling and drilling bits. Okay, that's it for two-path generation. In, in the next video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to actually drive the machine.